don't want peace. I want problems always. Hello, Mr. Lena. This is Bob from Visa. I am contacting you regarding your credit card. There were suspicious transactions over the last two weeks and we took measures to prevent any further fraud and locked your credit card. Sorry, what do you mean with suspicious transactions? So your credit card was rapidly charged from an eBay crypto mining shop in the Czech Republic. Quite a substantial amount from various Chinese vendors. Some shielded cable from Germany and someone sent money to a private person in France. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> that's correct. So usually when an account is charged this frequently from all around the world, it's safe to assume the credit card got hacked. Hence, we locked it. Thank you for the initiative, but this was all me. I'm currently in the process of building a DIY CNC router. Interesting, but isn't this a complete kit? Why do you need this many extra pieces? Let me give you a short rundown. You really want all your electronic components inside the metal box to lower the chances of any EMI that might occur. Off-the-shelf enclosures are a little bit pricey these days with the supply chain issues. But you know what's currently cheap? Crypto mining equipment. So I got myself a mining rig cabinet for 10 bucks that needed a bit of modification. For ventilation I went with three fans at the bottom, creating positive pressure inside the cabinet and one side opening in the upper third, so no dust can fall inside. I've strengthened the cutout on the top where the aviation connectors will be mounted with an angle iron bracket. And on today's episode, why you don't buy cheap drills? To some of you this might seem excessive, but it was Saturday evening, as usual, and this drill was my only chance to continue the build. Since the control board and the stepper motors don't run on mains voltage, you need a DC power supply. And if you want to keep the magic smoke inside your control board, it should be 12 volt. But at 12 volts, your steppers are as strong as my will to finish all the projects I began. So you need two power supplies. But you know what two stands for? Double the cost. Smart people on the print and see discord found a 4-in-1 power supply capable of delivering up to 1300 watts. It's a Cisco power supply. These power supplies are usually quite cheap since they are end of life products from old servers. Okay, so saving money seems important to you, but how do you control the stepper motors? Excellent question. We are Gribbelhag 2000 board. This is an open source PCB where a TNC 4.1 does the heavy lifting. It runs a 32-bit suitable rewrite of Gribble called Gribbelhag. With this approach, you don't need a low latency Linux PC with a parallel port. You can use any old Windows machine with USB or Ethernet. The workflow goes like this. You load your model into your CAM software, generate the toolpaths and save the G-code. The G-code is then loaded into I.O. Center, which provides a an user interface and streams the instructions to the microcontroller. The microcontroller translates the G-code into steps and direction pulses and sends it to the stepper drivers, which use the 42 volts from the power supply and the input from the microcontroller to turn the stepper motors. Enough talking, let's make some progress.
Everything inside here is now ready to go. I've plugged in the e-stop and I've also plugged in the start button. Now I just need to hook it up and hope the magic smoke stays inside. Switch on the breaker and press start. Oh, e -stop is, the e-stop is switched off. And now press start absolutely enough <laughs> Fuck. let's try it again switch on the breaker uh, switch on the power on button Ooh. Ah. <laughs> Now the only thing left to do is to mount the cable chains, the end stops and pull some wires. It's epoxy then. As you probably know, I really tend to overcomplicate things. So I've gone ahead and 3D printed this cable chain bridge. Do yourself a favor and don't use these aeration connectors everywhere. I've been soldiering for way too long. For the cable chain you have to use stranded wire cables, solid core ones will break. It's also not a bad idea to use shielded cables for the motors and end stops. I've used inductive end stops mounted to the moving part, so one switch can detect the home position and the maximum travel. One end stop on each of the Y axis allow for auto squaring if something is out of square. The height is set, G code is loaded. Let's hope for the best. In a nutshell, this is how the CNC works. 
Hello.